Hello, congregation, family, and friends. I pray that all is well with you. Welcome to this edition of our Tuesday night Bible study. Last time we were together on a Tuesday evening, we started looking at Psalm 63. And I titled the, the title of this study is Finding Christ in the Desert. We were able to look at the first three verses of Psalm 63. And I also gave you some homework. Do you remember what that was? See, there was only two possible places in Scripture where David could have written this psalm. And the first one was in 1 Samuel chapter 22, and the second place would have been 2 Samuel chapters 17 and 18. And so I challenge you, if you did not already read those chapters, to read them because it puts us in context as to where David was when he wrote this psalm. David was literally in the wilderness. He was in the desert. And as we see, he had a longing for Jesus. He had a longing to be close to the Lord. And so last time I broke this down into three categories. The first category in the first three verses, I said that Jesus Christ must be our most important desire. And we saw things like this. In verse one, David said, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there's no water. And then he says, because of your loving kindness, my lips will praise you. Jesus Christ has to be our most important desire. Is he your most important desire? I pray that he is. If Jesus has saved you from an eternity in hell, if Jesus has forgiven your sins, if he is your Lord and Savior, then you, he should be your most important desire above everyone and everything else. That's the bottom line. Jesus must be our most important desire. But there's more than that. Jesus also must be our most important delight. And that takes place between verses 4 down through 8. Now, I'm going to read all those verses. I doubt that we'll get to all of them in this particular session. But I want to read to you this next section, verses 4 through 8, where David is now claiming delight in the Lord. Here's what he says, beginning in verse 4 of Psalm 63. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul is satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth offers praises with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Very poetic, very beautiful. Do, do those words kind of reflect your own relationship with Jesus? So we're going to break this down a little bit and look and see a little bit more as to why Jesus Christ was David's most important desire. And what we're doing in this transition from the first three verses to this next section, God is bringing the soul of David from thirsting and from yearning to now feasting on God. So we want to examine this a little bit closer. In, in verse 4, he says, So I will bless you as long as I live. See, the blessings of the Lord for not only David, but for you and me, will last the remainder of our life. David already knows that God's blessings will last the remainder of his life. Do you understand that the blessings of God also will last for the remainder of your life? Even sometimes when we think God has forgotten us or he's abandoned us, we know that that's not true. Sometimes when we, we go through a day where it's frustrating and we just don't feel maybe God is as close to us as we would like. That's also not true. God doesn't change. We do. Sometimes we push God away. But what I want you to see here, as David is saying here in the beginning of verse 4, I will bless you as long as I live. We should be praising God every single day, shouldn't we? As often as we're able. Praising God, listen, praising God doesn't have to involve uh, going to a formal church service or a lot of pomp and circumstances. That doesn't, no. We can praise God anywhere at any time. I've praised God while I'm driving in my car, going from place to place. I can praise God as we see that David will talk about if I'm laying in bed. I can praise God right now as we're doing a broadcast. We're praising God together because we're lifting up the Most High God. We're lifting up our Lord and Savior. We're praising His name. You can praise Him anywhere. It doesn't have to be something formal. But what I want you to see is that David says, as long as he lives, he will be praising the Lord. He says, so I will bless you as long as I live, and I will lift up my hands in your name. 
Praise comes in all forms of worship, all as we live daily. David will also lift up his hands in God's name. See, David's delight, his most important delight, is in God's, God bringing out his praises. You see where David's focus is at? It's not on the circumstances he's in. David's in the desert. He's in the wilderness. But is, it a, is he focused on his circumstances? No, he's focused on God because he knows God is his deliverer. He knows God is right there with him in the desert. Do you know that too? When you're in that desert experience, when you're going through that trial, when you feel absolutely alone, do you know that God is right there with you? Do you know that he's walking with you every step of your life? And even though you may feel that you're in a desert, you're by yourself, that no one is there, no one understands you, there's no one there to talk to, God is there. Jesus Christ is there. Jesus never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He doesn't go away. Jesus told us in Matthew 28, he said, I am with you even till the end of the age. Jesus is with us all the time. The Holy Spirit, if we are true believers, the Holy Spirit dwells within us. So how can we ever say that God has abandoned us or he's left us alone or we're here to fight this by ourselves? God just doesn't care. We can't say any of those things. And even though we're seeing in this psalm that David is in the wilderness, he's in the desert, he's being chased, his life is at stake. He can still say, as long as I live, I'm going to praise you. I will lift up my hands to your name. Notice where his focus is. Now, I understand it's not always an easy thing to do, is it? We see David in a circumstance, and you've been in tough circumstances, and so have I. Is it always easy to lift up our hands in God's name? Is it easy to just lift those up and praise God all the time? Isn't it much easier when things are going well? Of course. When things are going our way, when we feel good, we have enough money to pay our bills, We've, we're healthy, we have a great job, our family, etc. Yes, it's great to praise God. What do you do in those times when you're in the desert or when you're a little short on money or when you don't feel good or when you've been praying for a healing and it hasn't happened? Can you still lift up your hands? Can you still praise God? Or do you have an issue with that that you can only praise God at certain times? See, David is showing us by example He's showing us by example that even in the worst of circumstances, when his very life is at stake, he can still praise God. He can still lift up his hands and he can still look to the God of his salvation. And I know it's not always an easy thing to do, but we have to do it even when circumstances, especially when circumstances are beyond our control and we find ourselves feeling all alone. We should be worshiping God all the more when those things happen because sometimes, isn't it true, that everyone else around us is gone and we really only have God. Isn't it an encouragement? Isn't it an encouragement that even though maybe our family and our friends have abandoned us, when we feel alone, when we're looked upon as oddballs or Jesus freaks or whatever, I've been called every name, I'm sure you have too. When we're looked upon as outcasts, when we're looked upon because we are true born again Christians, the Bible is the word of God and we believe it and we profess it, Christianity is taking a lot of hits these days. What happens when people don't want to associate with you? Who's still with you? God is. And God was with David out here in the wilderness. And that's why he was able to say the things that he said. Okay, let's continue. Let's move on to verse five. Then David says, my soul is satisfied. My soul is satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth offers praises with joyful lips. Let's look at that. As if we were just talking about that. We see David is now filled with God. His soul is satisfied as with marrow and fatness. It's down to the inside. The marrow is the very inside of his bones, all the way down. This is not a surface thing. He is feeling God. He is in love with God. He is serving God right down to the very marrow of his bones. Can you say that your situation is the same? Can I say that my faith is the faith of David, where no matter what's happening, right down to the very fat in me, right down to the very marrow of my bones, I am going to praise the Lord. I am going to worship the Lord. I am going to serve the Lord. I'm not going to look to the left or the right. I am going to serve Almighty God no matter what with everything that is in me. That's what he's talking about. 
He says, my soul is satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And we need to be able to see a connection. When, Jesus, when David says here, my soul is satisfied. Okay, let's look at that for a minute. We need to be able to see the connection between that. And if you go back to verse one, okay, let's go back to verse one in Psalm 63. He said in Psalm, in verse one, he said, my soul thirsts. There was a thirstiness. There was a hunger there. There was a yearning there. And now we can come down to verse five and his soul is no longer thirsting. It says, my soul is satisfied. Something's happened. He searched for the Lord. He was thirsty for God. He was yearning for God. And now he's saying, my soul is now satisfied. He is filled with God's love, with God's forgiveness, with God's grace, his mercy, his compassion. God is with David, even in his most remote wilderness, even when he is running and scared for his life, he can turn to God. He can turn to God and say, now my soul is satisfied. I don't need anything else. My soul is satisfied. You notice there's no mention here of being physically satisfied. He's in the desert, but it's a spiritual satisfaction. We also see that David now in this same verse, he says, my mouth will offer praises. My mouth will offer praises with joyful lips. David's delight in God is bringing a sense of plenty, a sense of wonder. Can you say that God fills you? Can I say that God fills me in the same way? Do you praise God with joyful lips? When you bring up the name of God, when you say God, or you're praying to him, or you're praising him, is it with joyful lips? Is it with a cheerful heart? Are you praising God in sincerity, or are you just going through the motions? Are you just saying things because, oh, I, get, I have to pray before the end of my day. I was taught I have to pray. Or do you, God, I can't wait to be with you. I can't wait to praise your name. I can't wait to thank you for everything that you've done. Are your lips bringing out praises? Are they joyful lips? Or are they lips that are just going through the motions? What is your answer? With me, look, I'll admit it. After all these years of being a Christian, it is sometimes very difficult to always praise God when sometimes things are not so good. We can still praise God, but we have to always check ourselves and make sure that we're praising God in the right way. God is deserving of our respect and our reverence and our awe. If it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have life to begin with. And if it wasn't for Jesus Christ, we wouldn't have eternal life. We wouldn't have forgiveness of sins. There would be no eternal life. There'd be no heaven. We'd have no fellowship with God. We'd be lost. Our souls would not be satisfied. And that's, that's the next thing that I really want us to look at. Here, here, think of this. And maybe you're in this situation now. I don't know. When a person's soul, see, I'm looking at verse 5 here. And it says, my soul is satisfied. It's complete. It's satisfied. But what happens when a person's soul is not satisfied with God? What happens when a person hasn't yielded to God? And we can't say like David that my soul is satisfied and my mouth is offering praises to you. What happens? Very often if our soul is not satisfied, listen, if we have physical yearnings, um, we can go off and solve those physical problems. If we're hungry, we eat some food. But sometimes we can fall into sin, don't we? If we're in, in getting involved in things that we shouldn't get involved with, it falls into sin. But what happens when our soul is not satisfied? Listen, our bodies get old and they die and they go in the ground. And one day we'll have a resurrected body. But what lives forever? Our soul. So we can feed our body and we can keep it healthy. But if our soul is not satisfied, do you see where I'm going with this? If your soul is not satisfied, it's longing for something. We were created to be in fellowship with God. And if we're not in fellowship with God, if our soul is not satisfying, if we're not thirsting after Jesus, if we are not hungering for his word and that fellowship, our soul is empty. And guess what? It's going to fill up with some other things. It's going to fill up with things. And, and, and maybe it's happened to you. We can get caught up in all kinds of things here. Instead of being satisfied, we get caught up in all kinds of things to fill the void. Sometimes it's drink or alcohol. Sometimes it's illicit sex. Sometimes it's abuse. 
thievery, murder, rape. All those things that proceed out of a heart, Jesus was talking about in the Gospels. All these things, envying. All these things that happen when our soul is not satisfied. So check your soul tonight, as I need to check my soul tonight. Is my soul satisfied in Jesus? Is my soul completely satisfied where I don't need to look for other things? If I had nothing else in my life, if nothing else was happening in my life, could I still say that my soul is satisfied with Jesus? Can I still praise him with joyful lips? Can I still do that? Or can I only do that at certain times? If your soul is not satisfied, let me encourage you. The same way that David's soul is satisfied, so can yours be. There's only one person that can satisfy your soul. Only one. His name is Jesus Christ. Only thing that can satisfy your soul. We can find many things to satisfy our physical cravings and emotional cravings. There's only one person that can solve and satisfy and complete our spiritual needs, our spiritual hunger, and his name is Jesus Christ. He's my Lord and Savior. I pray that he's your Lord and Savior too. Only Jesus can satisfy our souls to the point where we can actually say with David here, I will bless you as long as I live, Lord. I lift up my hands in your name. My soul is satisfied as with marrow and fatness right down to the very core of me. And my mouth offers praises with joyful lips. That should be our attitude as Christians. Today's a good day to ask yourself, as I ask myself, is our soul satisfied with God and God alone? Or is there something else that's satisfying us? Is there anything that you put in place of God? See, nothing and no one should ever get in the way of our direct worship and relationship with God. Did you hear me? Nothing and no one ever should get in the way of our relationship with Jesus Christ. No one and nothing. It, Jesus has to be our greatest desire. He has to be our greatest delight. If he is not and we profess to be Christians, and we profess to be born again and children of God, if he is not our greatest desire, if we don't wake up in the morning burning with desire to serve him each and every day, and whatever he's called us to do, to be those lights of the world he's called us to be, to share the gospel with other people, to be the sons and the daughters of God that he's called us to be, if we don't have that desire, then we have to think about where our dedication is. Where's our soul at? Yes, we have other things to do in life, of course. We all have, many of us have families, spouses, families, children to raise, grandchildren. We have jobs, we have careers, we have bills to pay. Of course, we live in this world. There's many things that we have to do. But nothing should come before Jesus Christ and our desire for him. And if there's nothing else that you take from this Bible study tonight, take that that Jesus must be our greatest desire and our greatest delight. Let's look at another verse, shall we? We're still doing okay time-wise. Let's look at the next one. Look at this. Now, David says in verse 6, When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Do you do that? What's he talking about? David says, I remember you upon my bed. God is on David's mind as he lays down at night, when he's laying on his bed. He not only remembers the Lord, but then he says, I meditate on you in the night watches. I think about you. I meditate on you. I meditate on your word. It's a truly remarkable statement when, when I look at this verse. This is one of those verses I circle in the Bible and say, wow, God, am I doing something like that? Considering David's circumstances, and we know that he's in the wilderness, how can he do that? How can he lay his head down at night at peace? and be at peace knowing that someone is out to get him. How can he do that? Because he loves God, because he knows that God is with him. God has not abandoned him. And as he's stating these verse after verse after verse after verse here in Psalm 63, this should give us great encouragement. What about you? When you're going to bed, and I don't know whatever your, whatever your sleep time is, it could be nighttime, it could be daytime, depending on your work schedule or whatever. The point is, when you're winding down your day and you're laying in bed, do you think about God? 
Do you reflect on God? Do you meditate on him in the night watches or in the day watches, whatever it may be? Do you think about God? I'll tell you something that I do at the end of every night, and I've done this for many years. Before I fall off to sleep, my last thoughts are, Lord, did I serve you well today? If I sin today and I wasn't aware of it, Lord, please forgive me. Those times that I came up short, please forgive me. And I think about that because if God takes me during that night or during that time of sleep, if he takes me, I want to be able to go into the presence of God and hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord if he takes me. And if I wake up the next morning, I praise God for the morning. And those of you who follow me, particularly on Facebook and Twitter as well, you see that I post things first thing in the morning. Thank you, Lord, for another day to serve you. May your will be done today. You know what I'm talking about. Those that follow me all the time, don't I write the same things every single morning? Why? Because my focus is on God. Because I want to praise him in the morning. Because I want to thank him for bringing me safely through the night. And I want to thank him for another day of life and another day to serve him. That's why I post that. And the other one I write is, may your will be done today, Lord Jesus, and not my will. That's me focusing on God and saying, Lord, I am here to do your will. I want to delight in you. I want to boast in you. I want to serve you. I don't want to serve myself. I want to serve you. I want to have those joyful lips. And I want to be able to meditate on you in the night watches. And when I wake up in the middle of the night, and I'll share this with you too, because I believe in, in sharing things about myself and being transparent so you get to know me outside of just being a preacher and, and a Bible teacher. Last week, every single night, I had terrible nightmares, terrible dreams. Now, I'm a person that doesn't dream. I just don't. I've had very few dreams that I can remember throughout my lifetime. I'm just not a dreamer. But this past week, I was having dreams, and they were dreams of people that came up in my life that I used to know years ago that kind of came back in my life. None of those dreams were a blessing. None of those dreams were good. They all turned out bad. They all turned out violent. Uh, it just, they weren't a good thing. I couldn't make head or tail of them because I can't interpret dreams either. Until something happened later in the week. And once I was able to resolve that, guess what? I haven't dreamed since then. You know what was happening? I was under spiritual attack. And had I not kept focusing on God, had I not kept, not kept focusing on Jesus, had I not turned this over to him, I might still be plagued with those nightmares. I still may be having those dreams, but I'm not having them anymore. And that's because I was able to meditate. I turned it over to God. And once God... Uh, uh, allowed me at the end of the week to see in a greater way what was happening, it all went away. And here we are four or five days later, and I haven't had a dream or a nightmare since. I praise God for that. I can meditate on him in the night watches. I can lay down in my bed and thank him for that. And when I wake up in the morning, I said, Lord, thank you for bringing us safely through the night. That's my prayer every morning. That's what I say. What do you do? How do you handle that? When, J when David is talking here, he says, when I remember you on my bed. How often do you think about God and meditate on him at night? Is he your comfort? Is that how you go to sleep? Are, are you, do you go to sleep with God on your mind and in your heart and in your soul and on your lips? That you thank him for the day. That you thank him for the day that he gave you. That he got you through the day. And when you wake up in the morning, do you have that same kind of praise? Lord, thank you for another day, another day that I can serve you, another day that I can be with you, another day that I can possibly reach someone for you with the gospel. That should be our desire. That should be our delight to be able to do God's will and to be able to have the proper mindset and be able to say with our lips, think with our brains and feel in our heart and soul that Jesus Christ is the most important thing in our life. Can you say that? Can you say that? You know, think about David's situation. Whether it's King Saul's army chasing him or it was Absalom's army, and if you read those chapters I gave you, 1 Samuel 22 and 2 Samuel 17 and 18, you will see he's being chased and his life is at stake. But no matter who is chasing him, David can still lie down at night. 
He's fully confident God has the situation in hand. Do you have that same kind of confidence that God has the situation in hand? And whether there's somebody seeking to kill David or not, or whether someone is even after you, or you're being plagued with something, or you don't have an answer to a problem, or you're struggling health-wise, can you still lay your head down at night and be at peace? And can you still wake up in the morning praising God for a new day? Can you do that? Because if we can't, including myself, then we're falling short somewhere. And we need to look at David as the example. He was a man after God's own heart. Yes, David committed some horrendous sins in his life. But God also called him a man after his own heart. Why? Because David repented. Because David wanted to serve the Lord. And he wound up being Israel's greatest king, King David. One of the great Old Testament characters, one of the great Old Testament kings, if not the greatest. And so when we look at this, and we're going to have to stop here because I don't want to get too long with this. Can you or I say, and let's leave it at this, can you say and can I say that we have the same confidence, the same faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he's watching over us as we sleep the same way that David's how many times have you tossed and turned at night? And do you? Do you toss and turn at night? You can't shut your mind off. You've got a pressing problem. There's anxiety. There's some kind of issue. And it seems to have no solution. Remember this. David is saying here, when I remember you on my bed. He's not saying, oh, you know, once I uh, focus on you, all my problems are going to disappear. No. But there's a way that we can fall into slumber, to fall into peace, knowing that Jesus is watching over us that God already has the solution, that God is already working things out. Doesn't that give you comfort? Doesn't that give you a sense of peace where you can just lay your head down at night and know that God is even working on our behalf while we're sleeping? And while we are sleeping, he's watching over us, protecting us, making sure that everything is okay. And that's why when we get up in the morning, Lord, thank you. Thank you for bringing us through the night safely because there's some people that don't make it through the night safely. There are some people that don't never wake up when they go to sleep. We hear about that all the time. And so that there are the kind of thoughts that I want to leave you with. You know, David doesn't, doesn't just remember God here. He's meditating on God. It's a different thing. We can think about God. We can remember God. It's a different thing to actually meditate on him. And so I really want to leave that with you. Make sure that you're turning things over to God so that you don't have those restless nights. Make sure before you go to sleep that you thank God for the day that you had and for all the blessings he gave you. Even if you can't see them, he gave you breath, right? Every breath is a gift from God. He gave you food. He gave you shelter. He gave you water to drink. He gave you friends or family. Whatever your situation is, there's always something to thank God about. There's always something to praise him about. That gets me excited. I want to praise God with joyful lips the same way that David did. I pray that your heart, that your soul has that same desire for Jesus that we see King David have. In our next Bible study, we'll pick up in the next verse and we'll continue with our look in Psalm 63. And when, when we can find Christ in our desert, when we're having those desert times, we can always find Christ the same way that David did. If this Bible study has helped you, if it's blessed you, please feel free to share it. I know some of you already do, and I appreciate that. We want to get the word out. We want to share this good news of the gospel with as many people as we can. So for those of you who share the gospel, to share the broadcast and host watch parties or whatever, thank you for doing that. Please, um, Isaiah 55, 11 says God's word doesn't return void. No, it doesn't. It reaches whoever it needs to reach. If it reached you tonight, if this Bible study caused you to think about something, then this message was meant for you tonight. So go ahead and share it. Also, be a Berean. Acts 17, 11 says the Bereans were more noble than anyone else. Why? They weren't better looking. They weren't smarter. They weren't richer. Here's what they did. They received the word with all readiness, the Bible says, Acts 17, 11. But then they turned around and they searched the scriptures every day to make sure what they were hearing was true. That's what I encourage you to do with any video, anything I preach or teach. You take everything that I gave you, go back and read it and study it and look at it for yourself to make sure it's the truth. Because especially in these last days, there are a lot of things. I see it every day. There are things being said, being preached, being, being prophesied that are simply not true. 
That makes me very unpopular to say things like that. But I would be remiss if I didn't tell you and encourage you to be a Berean. Check the scriptures for yourself. Whether it's me, someone else you watch on television, I don't care how popular they are. I don't care how many people are in their church. You check them out. Anyone you watch on television, listen to on the radio, anywhere on social media, especially on social media, this is, this is unbelievable, the social media. Everybody and his brother has a word, and every other person is an apostle. It, it's incredible. Check it out. Make sure that what you're hearing is the truth. Make sure. You owe it to yourself. You need to know what the Bible truly says. I encourage you, read it and study it for yourself. Be in that word every day. But every time you hear a message, take down the references, study it, make sure it's the truth. You'll be surprised. The more you know the Bible, the quicker you'll be able to realize when someone is not preaching truth or they're prophesying something that has nothing to do with the Bible or they're teaching some kind of weird doctrine that you cannot prove biblically. Be careful. Be careful of those, those wolves that come in sheep's clothing. They're all over the place, especially now in the last days. Please pray for our ministry, livinginharmonyministries.org. Livinginharmonyministries.org is our website. We're in the process of updating some things on it, but you could go on there. We have a live chat 24-7 if you have some questions, some of the things we do on there. If we can help you in your walk with Jesus, please contact us. You can get contact us through any of, you know, any of these platforms that you're seeing me on right now. We're multicasting here, simulcasting on several platforms. So we encourage you to do that. Please keep us in prayer as we stay on the front lines for Jesus. We stay bold up front. There's no retreat. There is no way that we're going to back off from teaching and preaching the gospel. This is what God calls us to do, whether it's in local pulpits, which we do, social media, traveling, whatever God has called us to do, that's what we're going to do. So we want to thank you for your prayers. And if God leads you to support us financially, then I leave that between you and God. That is a personal conviction, but we do need your support. We could use your support, and we'd be grateful for your support and very humble to receive it. You can do it two ways. One is on our website, livinginharmonyministries.org, or you can do it right through Facebook Messenger. Several of you do that. It's quick, it's easy, it takes a minute, and it's done, and it's secure. But I leave that between you and God. Please pray about supporting this ministry if we've been a blessing to you. Well, thank you for being with us here for this Bible study on this Tuesday night. God bless you.